Hello everybody, it's Kimberly at Journal Breeze. Today we're going to do a craft with me, hopefully. <laughs> I haven't done a craft with me before with you guys. So um, I've done a little preparation, but not very much, in hopes that I can actually experience what it is to, to work spontaneously in front of an audience I can't see or get feedback from. <laughs> I've taught in front of hundreds of people and not been as uncomfortable as I am doing it in in this format where I don't have any feedback from you all. I don't like the lack of interaction. I much prefer to have faces and uh, questions and things like that going on. It just takes my attention away from me and I pay attention to you and what you want and things just unfold really more comfortably for me than this. But I want to get used to YouTube. I want to be able to work spontaneously because it's there's not enough time in the day to plan everything out. And so I think I'll be able to do more YouTubes if I can just switch it on as some of my mentors seem to be able to do. Like Carol Laws, Wendy, um, of course Rachel. Um, who else am I big on watching? Uh, Oh, a lot of people. They're just not coming to my mind at the moment. But they might. But I find that most people are able to do that. So that's my hope. I showed these envelopes um, a couple of days ago, three days ago or so, on my um, Instagram. And you all love them so much. And some of you asked for a class on it. So that's what today is about. And I came up with some other ways to make them as well. So it's been fun for me. And I'm looking forward to this project. Um, I got the idea from a post that was put up by Stephanie at Monahan Papers. And it just so happens that I had recently bought something from Monahan Papers. And there was a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a mix-up on the color that I ordered. So when they sent back the exchange, they included this wonderful, gorgeous, real French letter. The date is actually missing. It's from Toulouse in France and um, I'm sure it's really really early because the paper is like you know how early early cotton is extremely fine yarn and extremely tightly woven and it feels like silk? That's exactly what this paper reminds me of compared to the paper we have today. This feels like glass. It's so smooth. So I just thought that was the sweetest thing that they did and they certainly didn't need to and I much appreciate it. So a shout out to them if you're not familiar. Mono Hand Papers on Instagram. And this is the inside of the letter. Oh there's a date. 1861. There you go. So it's a beaut. And this is how the French used to um, make their papers, make their envelopes and letters. One piece of paper, because, you know, paper was hard to come by. And obviously this was somebody who had a lot of money to get paper this fine. And it has the address and the stamp in the corner. And then it gets folded up like this. And folded like this. Oh, it actually is folded probably a little bit differently because this would not be on the outside. So being that it's got this, yeah, I think this is what's left over uh, from a wax seal because it's actually dimensional. So they probably had a wax seal that held this together. So perhaps maybe part of this was underneath. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is how it would have gone. It would have gone like this. I don't want to squish it. I don't want to rip it. But And then the wax seal would have been there. So that would have been it. So that is how I happen to make these two. And I've tucked them in. So I'll show you about those. And then this one is um, another tuck type and it's from our dear friend Heather at Ruby and Pearl XO. 
So Ruby and Perl XO has quite a few digitals of this type of French letter, this all one piece. This is a copy of my own, but I'll be getting down to the ones by Ruby and Pearl to show you. So they're one source, but you know, lots and lots of the digital makers, um, printable makers, are doing the faux French letters today. And so you can probably find it through most of your favorite sources. And then it actually, I tied it with this bow And I left this side open and I left this open as well because I tucked it in. What did I do? Okay, I tucked it in in the back, but I had this fold here in the front. And so I didn't obviously want to glue it down or it wouldn't, um, it would never open and I didn't tend to have it opened. This is another faux letter. So I ended up thinking that this paper went more realistically with this coloring. And that's really the point, is you need to find pre-made tops of receipts is primarily what they are, and then match them into the paper. And then I love these envelopes. So this was originally my outside, and I had stamped it, and then I had folded it the other way. But this didn't look as good with that paper, I didn't think. So I turned it around, and that's how that was. So you know, we're not really mailing these, so you can do whatever you want to make it work for you. And you just think outside of the box to make it pretty. And then this ribbon just kind of brought it all together, I felt. I mean, it's sweet. I'm actually going to use it in my Victorian ladies' journal that I'm just about ready to start. It's all gathered. There's a ton of it. I thought it was going to be a signal sig single signature. It's probably going to be more like either three separate single signatures or one journal with three signatures, maybe even four. Anyway, it'll be fun. Okay, so what I've done is I've put together a whole bunch of combos, um, partly for you, partly for me, because I want to be able to uh, show you all the different possibilities because not everybody can get the digitals or have a letter to copy and I understand that so I'm going to show you other ways to to get there but obviously this is the one I've mentioned and I've used um, a different digital you know it doesn't have to be a plain digital and you just fold it on the fold lines I mean it's really not hard to do when it's a pre well this one was my own copy so pre-made in that sense I guess and then you can see where all the fold lines are. So it's very easy. And you can do the same thing with any piece of paper, right? And then this is the part that folds over and tucks into here. All right, so I'll decorate that one a little bit after we go through some samples. And this was the second one I made with that other paper. But how fun to open up and actually have a paper that has the um, design on it. This is from Ruby and Pearl. So that got me thinking when I was picking out papers of going, you know, a little bit in a different direction. So this is another one. Um, I think this might be from Rachel. I'm really sorry I don't remember where every single paper is from. I have hordes of printables. I buy many, many at a time generally. And not everybody has their marking on it. Or I, or I cut them out sometimes and put them in different, you know, storage places. And lo and behold, I, I don't remember where they're from. So please forgive me for that, but I, I, I'll do my best to remember for you. I kind of, you know, I think you're going to be able to find stuff without it having to be specifically where I found it. But I do want to give credit. So as I say, I think this was Rachel. And it is it comes double-sided. But you can see the printer's up here and the printer's down here. So, you know, it's that ongoing nightmare. It makes it kind of unusable in a way because it's a tuck type. So if the white shows on this side, then it's okay. And the white's going to show on that side to make it large enough to make it worthwhile. That area there is really what you want to work on. That's where the fold lines are. 
So sometimes when this happens, you just don't use it at all. You just throw it out um, or use bits and pieces and use it for something else. Other times you can decorate it with another piece of paper, another digital, or you can stencil, or you can use washi tape. Sort of depends on what you're up for. But it's a really good color because it will go with a lot of different receipts, tops. So something to think about. This is from Vintage Ephemera Garden. And I just thought it was the cutest thing, this little bird. And you can see how well that would go up here. Be really cute to go on top of this. And you would just cut it off right here in order to make that work. And then you can cut it off here. And it would pretty much be the whole top. So I noticed in uh, Stephanie's original stamps that she showed, or original um, envelopes that have all that design on it that look like the top of receipts, uh, that the stamps are on the left side sometimes. So that's what I'm thinking. When there's a header that has a lot going on over here, we could just put the stamp over here. Why not? This one would even go maybe better. No, I think this one goes better. And that would be that. So it would just be cutting it off right below the bird. You know, another option is you cut it off like this, but then, you know, there's the bird head sticking up. So that's a possibility. This is another wonderful header that I really like, and it has the airmail stamp on it, and it has the um, postmark stamp and the postmark and this symbol over here. So this would require a larger envelope, but I haven't gotten to any larger envelopes yet. So let's wait until we get there to figure out how we might use this. But this is from Vintage by Me, and I really like, like this a lot. So I'd like to be able to find a way to use that today. And then these are the smaller versions. I've printed everything out full size, or 5x7, or 4x6, if I knew the envelope that I was going to use it on. These are the 5x7s, not fit to frame. Um, and this is, I think, probably 8x10. Uh, so, you know, when you don't know what size envelope, then you might want to print it out on both. This is a really neat scene. I thought this would be cool as, a, as an envelope header. And you can see how that, you know, in this darker area of this envelope has some, you know, could look really good up there. Okay. And then this one, I liked this. On a really tiny area, like a tiny envelope, this could almost be the whole thing. There's some even tinier ones that fold up, and this could be the whole thing. So we'll wait until we get there to use that. Now this is one of the ruby and pearls, I believe. Yeah. All right, so ruby, or Heather, gives us both sides of the envelope, which I think is great. And there's two blues in the set that these came in, which I can't remember what it's called, but it's probably envelopes or letters. So I noticed on Stephanie's samples, they would have just a bundle of these really dark ones like going all the way across and all the way down the side. So I'm thinking that these can be stacked. So I'm thinking I'm going to cut out, you know, like one for this and one for this and then stack them, put another one up there. So that's my thought for this. But you can see how tiny this, this can become. The way this is folded and folded, and then this is gone and this is gone. Well, that's not that tiny. This is maybe the tinier one. No, it's pretty small. It's even smaller than that one. So you have to start thinking about, you know, smaller sizes. And of course, we can make our own, which I've got coming up. So when that happens, um, you know, you can make it as small as you want. Now this is one of those, I love this. This is a button card from Tracy Fox only. I glued in different buttons than the ones that are kind of on here and fading. She provides these buttons in her kit and I put them on, I uh, printed them onto cardstock. I guess I printed them on paper and then glued them on cardstock and then glued them on the back so that they have a, um, so they're standing up a little bit, so they have a relief. I must have not been very busy that day. <laughs> um, I just love this. I love it so much. This is included. It's the coolest thing. 
It's in her fabric sample book kit, or alternative, or um, add-on, I think it is. Anyway, it's so cute, and then I put this on. Just love it. So it looks like an envelope on this side. So, so this is the kind of thing you can also add to. You know how easy this would be to cut out yourself. It's not like you need to, um, you know, have anything special. Just take a piece of paper you like and just cut it out to the size you want. It does not have to have the sides folded in. Fold it in. So that's something we can de decorate. And then how about if you just have an envelope? I spray dyed these envelopes. These are the business envelopes or security envelopes are called. I dipped it and I also sprayed it with Tim Holtz inks. And um, I love how it turned out. I'd be perfectly happy using it this way. But I think this might be nice on it. And I would cut this out. I would not leave this here. So with this cut out more, it might look really, really pretty. We'll see. We'll see. There might be something that comes along that's even better. And here's another envelope that I dipped. Coffee dyed, tea dyed. It's kind of a gray color, which I avoid gray. It's like my least favorite feel. I think colors have emotions, and I just don't like the color gray. But this background has a very gray tone, and I do love navy. So I'm thinking that might be really pretty on there. And I see this envelope as kind of bulbous. It's square and kind of bulbous, and it's stiff. It's kind of big as envelopes go for our, our journal making. So this is a bulbous and big header. And so I think that might work really well on an envelope. I think it's going to be a winner. And I think with the right color stamp, or the right kind of stamp, it can be very attractive. And then, of course, I'm going to do other things to the top as well. But let's move on here. Okay, so now next, uh, all right, so <clears throat> these are in a recent kit by Souvenir de la France. They're actually big. They're the whole page, or two to a page. But I printed them 5x7, and these are all by Ruby and Pearl. And these are the other side of this envelope, or this back to this receipt. It's a giant receipt. She gives you the front in this size and then the back. And I, I do have the front somewhere. I thought I printed it on here, but I didn't. But that's what I would do, probably. Um, so this is going to be a fold your own, make your own. And I'm going to do it to a size so that I can put this all the way down one side and this all the way across. So it'll be like that. So that'll be tricky. And then um, I feel like these stamps right here is what I can use from this somewhere. This blue can go on this letter. I like these. So, um... That would be fun. All right, and this is an odd color, isn't it? She actually sells a receipt or has a receipt in the kit that goes on the other side. But I don't like the color. It's kind of cool. It's kind of grungy and cool. But as letters go, it wouldn't be my fave. So I'd put something else on this side. But this thing, I think, would kind of be an interesting header with it if I make an envelope out of this. And I'm actually thinking that after I fold these up and decorate the front, I can still put them, put them through my printer after. Because it's not like it's going to stick out. So, let's hope. This is an envelope I obviously copy dyed. And I just love it. I love it so much. I actually love the back, too. So, I'm not going to probably ever seal it. It'll go into a journal. The piece of paper that I stamped with Create and glued on after. Looks like I copied a fabric uh, patch that I made because it looks like like it's fabric under there. And then this fantastic, oh my gosh, I love this receipt so much. And this is by uh, Ida Chain, and that's what this is, okay? But this is obviously a smaller version. So I'm thinking that this might be just beautiful on here. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. 
Believe it or not, I don't like these receipts with the great big dark tops. I don't like how they look. And uh, so I don't buy very many. And so I, I'm really using some of the same people over and over to accommodate this idea. I think these are from uh, Pink Monarch. Never had even printed a single thing out of this kit that I bought, I believe, before Christmas, right before Christmas. Um, or maybe even before then. But uh, she's got some good ones, so check her out. Pink Monarch Prints. Now this is a small one, but look how great that color is going to be with this. Fabulous. I'm just going to cut it out and glue it right over there. I don't care that it glues over the stamp, because I can put my own stamp on. Maybe in pearl. Now this is another envelope that I... It almost looks like it got sun bleached. It's an interesting pattern. And it's a lovely, um, high quality uh, paper came with stationery. And I love it. So I'm thinking that also would go well with this. You can tell I keep printing this one out so much. <laughs> so funny. Okay, so this one, this one, oh, I love this. This is also Souvenir de la France. Just think this is so delightful. It's so French. This particular illustration and the fact that they would pick pansies. And I like the color of it. A lot of times I don't like the color. Um, and maybe they're great colors when they made them, but they don't print out well on my machine. If it goes to yellow, I, I don't like it at all. And sometimes that happens. But this one, I love the color. It looks real. I love this, everything about it. So I'm going to cut this smaller. And then this, um, this actually, uh, this was smaller. This was a very small piece, and it might have also been from Souvenir de la France. So I made it large. I think I did some things to make it larger, but I made it larger. And this isn't really important to me. So I, and it isn't really set up to be an envelope. So I'm thinking it's going to be bent here, bent here, and then like that, and then folded here and folded there, because that part looks like it was an envelope. But this also looks like it was folded. So I don't know. This might have been photoshopped. And then, um, and then, and then put these maybe on the back. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I like it, and I, I want to try something to make it work. Oops. All right. And this is another one, but out of Jane and um, Heather, and I. I don't know. Once I cut it out, we'll see. We'll see if that would go. This is so pretty. I um I dyed this uh, with uh, blue dots on top of the tea dye with blue aqua dye that I made with food coloring. And if I do it the right way, then a lot of those dots get covered up. So I was thinking I would turn it upside down. I've gotten letters where they're upside down. You know, it's an error. But, um, and I've had to send some upside down because I've addressed them wrong. So I think it's possible to uh, to make this work on here and then move it over. Have room for some stamping and maybe something down here. But very similar color. Very pretty, I think. Okay. All right, all right. So now here's another one. I think this is from. Um, she's up in Canada. Tree, um, craft tree, something like that. Craft tree, the craft tree. She does. She does quite a few things, and this is an older kit. Another copy tea dye, and I just think that might work. Got, it's a good color, and it would be attractive. And then maybe even I would cut this out and put it down here or something. Okay. Depends how realistic you want your envelope to look. Obviously, you can decorate it more ways. This is another copy tea dye, sort of on the gray side. So um, this I would cut up here, around there. 
This almost looks like an address. You could almost do it like this, like I did with the uh, purpley one. But um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see when, when we get there. Okay, so then this, this I like. This is actually a check. You know how they give us check? Little checks. So I figure it can be cut out and put right up there. Or even forget that and just do it like that. But this is a envelope that I spray dyed and um, I like it. So I thought that would be fun to use. It's kind of dark. So this would sort of lighten it up a little bit. And, um, and I really love the streetcar so much. So there we go. All right. And then there's always the window envelopes. So I tried a lot of different things with this window envelope. I love to turn my window envelopes inside out. So the window ends up being on the left. And um, I grunged this up. And I was thinking that this could go inside. Like that. And then I could use some of this on the outside. I think I also had some other ideas. And maybe use this over here and then have the stamp on the left. I played around with different ideas on this. But I feel like this is going to be where I go with it. And then this one also has blue. Can you see that? It has a blue tint to it. I don't know if that's really showing up, but it does. It almost looks like a cloudy sky. It's really pretty. It's got pink here. So then that's another alternative for this. I try to match the background. That's my goal. Hope you're liking this part. Um, okay, what do we have here? Oh yeah, this is a big envelope that I don't even like. At all. And I've had it for ages. And I um, coffee dyed it hoping I would like it better, but I don't really. I still don't like this side at all, but I like this side. So if I were to put it in something and have this open, I think I would be happy. So that kind of makes me think, well, what am I doing? But you know, it's junk journaling. We can do whatever we want. So this color picks up this really well. So I think I can make use of it if I do that. This is so big though, I think it's going to have to be you know, this way, and then it's going to have to be like this, and then you open it up. And you got to love booksellers, right? And then it says, manufacturers of blank books. I mean, what could be better? What? Tell me. What could be better? So that's going to go there. And then this one. Why do I have this one here? If I wanted to do the outside, maybe? Perhaps. Perhaps I could do it on both sides if I didn't glue it down. I guess that would work too. I like this because it says specialty fabrics. It's got a swan. I really think that's pretty. Okay, so who knows? Let's see what we do when we get there. I might do both sides. But if I do both sides, then this would have to be a removable envelope. It'd have to be like uh, paper clipped in. Oh, you know what? It could be a flip. And then both sides would need to be decorated. I have to put something in this green to hide it though because I, 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 I like the color green. I just don't think it goes well with this. I love this color green and I love this color green, but I don't love them together. All right. And then we have, okay, this is from um, Rachel and Bach. I think, I think I call them Rock and Bach on their Etsy and they have a challenge going right now, so I hope you know who I mean. And they also have uh, a YouTube. It's Rachel, and I'm not sure what, what, where the Bach comes from. So that's partly why I can't remember. But I did buy a kit from them that I love, and it's embroidered receipts. And here's here, here they all are. So they actually put this together, and it leads to this really tiny um, 
you know, left-sided design that would lend itself on a really tiny envelope. I think it's really pretty. And this is it larger. This would be the 5.7, probably not fit to frame. Let's see. Yeah, it's 5 by 7, probably fit to frame. And, um, and there's two more in the 5 by 7 ish size. Yeah. So this one I would just go like that. And this one I would maybe just go like that. I might include that up to here. Um, really, really like the color yellow. Uh, the paper, it was very hard to find any paper that would go. It was already an envelope. Couldn't. And then I was going through all my stashes, and I did come up with this, which I think is a pretty combination because I love this. But this is cardstock. So here's what I'm thinking of doing with this. Turning it into a... Um, one of those envelopes. I'm going to bend it now. What the heck, right? Oh, wait, wait. Let's see. How long does this have to be? This has to... Okay, I have to make it a little bit wider. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. It has to be that wide. Then it would have to go like this. I know I'm out of frame, but it's that or my head. Oh, good, you can see me a little bit. Okay. And let's see if it'll meet. Ooh, let's see. Are you going to meet the other side? Yes. Okay. Okay. A little bit bigger. Okay. 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 All right. We're on our way. A um What are they called? Oh, document envelope. That's what they're called. Okay, so that's going to be great. Okay, here's the thing now. This is what I've never understood about document envelopes. <laughs> so when I make them, I tend to leave this as the back and make cut the lip, cut the lip out of the part that is parted, so that this is the place where the cute envelope tie is. And then saying that, I realize, all right, so maybe that is not going to work this time. Maybe this will be where the tie is, and I'll make it, maybe not a tie, maybe just make it a nice um, tongue-shaped envelope top. Or it could just be, you know, like that. And then make this side the fancy side. Yeah. Okay. I'm thrilled I can use this. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Almost done here. Showing you ideas. All right. And this. Well, these are more receipts. I don't know, this could be Pink Monarch or the Crafting Tree. Or Took. Could be Took. Took's Craft Table. And this one, pretty, yeah, Pink Monarch Prints. These are big, so these would take one of the larger Manila file envelopes. But wouldn't that be spectacular? I have a ton of them. I, I put it on there. The colors are just horrible together. You know, that orangey color of, of office manila envelopes. So I don't, you know, intend to make one that big. But if I, you know, could make the colors work, I think that would be beautiful. So I'm going to work on that. I have to do some dyeing to get that to work. 
And then look how pretty this, this letter would be inside. Love it. Okay. And then, this, so this is the full size. So, so this is why I'm saying you really need to print things out at smaller sizes to work on envelopes. And then last but not least, if you have some Tim Holtz um, scrapbook paper, you know, these would work. I love these houses. Love this. So I thought maybe this could be cut and used in something. I like that. I love that. James Taylor and Son. I love the singer James Taylor. So I like this and that. So this has a lot of options. All right. So there you go. You can, you can go gather your stuff and then start to um, have fun with me. I feel like I need to take a break. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, here's another envelope that could be done. Now look, what's interesting about this, this is from Yvonne Preston, you know, who, who runs Junk Journal Junkies on Facebook and Junk Journal Junkies Boutique and JJJ Chat Groups. The best groups, the best everything. Um, I've been with them as long as I've been doing this. So I really uh, appreciate and thank her so much. And then I filled it with uh, paper cameo paper in her blue kit. Blue, not blue kit, but blue coffee dyed, I think it's called. Blue lace. And I tend not to glue my envelopes down. I tend to print both sides and then their writing spots. So this one... Yvonne, she actually used a receipt as part of the decor. Like it's already done. You could just put a stamp here and you'd be finished. But you could also add another one. So I thought I might. Or I could do this side. Put something here. Alright, so what should we work on? What's our time like? How long have we been doing this? Oh my gosh, 37 minutes. Wow. You know what? I'm going to make this part one. No, I better not. I won't come back. <laughs> let's let's do one together. Um, this one, I think you've got the gist. So I'll cut here, cut here, and it'll, it'll be the document folder. So I'll finish that up and show you later. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What else could we do? Let's... let's Let's maybe work on this one since I don't really like it too much so that I can like it. All right. So I'm literally, look at what you've got. And, you know, you might decide to keep the whole thing in, but I'm actually going to cut off everything above the design just so it has more of a feel Actually, I think I'm going to use a ruler. And my, I could tear it, but I, well, maybe I will tear it because I do want it to blend in. Let's see, did I tear the others? You know, I think I did. Yeah. Okay, I didn't tear. I think I teared that edge. I cut that edge. No, no, I tore that edge. All right. And this one I, I cut. And I think... They look totally different from each other because of that. So do whatever makes you happy. I'm going to cut the top and tear the bottom because I want this to be... Am I off? Am I off? Oh, you can see it. I want this to be... I don't want to cut into this any more than absolutely necessary. I mean, not at all if I can help it. So I'm going to go like that. Hope I'm straight. Okay, so cute. So, 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 so cute. All right, and then I'm going to tear. I do have a tear ruler. I have a love-hate with this tear ruler. It's not... Uh, you know, I, I would like a much smaller tear. 
You know what? That design's going to end there. Oh, I don't want to wreck it. Okay, let me try this. Oh, and you know what else? When I tear and it's on the wax paper, it tends to flip. So, I learned that the hard way. Okay. Oh, good. Just made it. All right. And then here. I'm going to move it. Let's see. I've got a big envelope. Okay. If you have a small envelope, you're going to move it as close as you need to to go there. But. Oh. Okay. And hence my love hate relationship with this ruler. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's where I am on my surface. I don't know what the deal is. I have two mats under here that are taped together. So it makes for a lump. I usually work over here and I'm afraid I'll be off camera. So I'm cognizant of that. Okay, let's press right here. Yay! All right. And one more tear to go. So these two uh, holding onto the small end to tear. I never used to tear like this until this ruler came along. Okay. There we go. I did it. Wow. Okay. Guess I'm getting better. Okay. So. This is going to be cute. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have not been grunging these up because I think that that draws too much attention to the edge. I really want it to look as real as possible. That's my goal, just for fun. But I do put it up right at the edge and right at the edge. That way it kind of eliminates two lines of vision. Oops, I see a little bit of white here. Not good. Okay. I'll just cut that off. I hate to have a perfect edge, but I don't want to have white. Let's see, maybe I can put a little dab of brown on there. I mean, I think you can distress without it really showing. It just covers up the white if it works. Okay, so then other times I just rip it in bits with my fingernail. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then I just use, let's see, was I using, um, I don't think I was using glue stick. So this is art glitter glue. off actually and I put it in a journal and cut it up. Oh no, oh no it's gonna be the flip that's right okay all right so next would be if you have a stamp that goes like this you know that has the lines the postmark lines then you want to use that I I do but it's too small for this size envelope so I'm not going to and then I've got a couple of stamps they are where are they located? Congress Street. So that sounds pretty, pretty U.S. to me. And so I've got Paris and I've got this trifle thing. I love these both. I don't want to continue on with the same line, so I would use this one, and I would probably do it here. But I'm going to first put on a stamp, and I keep my stamps in um, in this. 
ones in here. I have a lot of stamps, and I need to I need to use them more. I love them so much. Now these kinds of stamps, you could actually use the whole thing. So let's see. I'm not going to use that obviously, but I did buy this. This is not. Uh, you know, 1946, obviously. But when a letter's closed, if you buy one that has the flip, I just leave it on. And this one, I think, can go around the whole thing. Yeah. So I just end up leaving it all on because, heck, this thing is old. I mean, the more of it you can save, the better. But you'd have to set it up so that you could still open the envelope. So you'd have to work it out. You know, this isn't going to work here, obviously, but I love it. I love this airplane stamp. I think I've got it in many colors, and I just really, really love it. And I love the color, the patina. But let's see. Um, this is a copy. I don't think that looks very good. But you, you, you get the idea. You could take something that's already been used and stamped. I love that, but I won't work on this. These are real stamps. He's an interesting character. You know what? He fits with that era. He would not be my first choice because he's got a a gun. But um, but he goes. The color is ideal. So I think he might be a winner. So let me see what else I have before deciding. Isn't this the cutest little um, <laughs> glassine bag? Oh my gosh, it's so adorable. Oh my gosh, I just love it. And then I've got this stamp says on a... Oops. Honor servicemen, prisoners of war, missing and killed in action. Six cent stamp, so it's it's an oldie. Okay, all right. So that's one bag. I try to separate my bags by type. The type is in my mind. It's not really anything strategic. This is a a drum from like Thailand or something, Ch or Asian, yeah, one of the Asian countries. And I've got it in here, so I think that's a mistake. Um, I'm trying to think what what else I might want to have in here. Um, oh, you know what? I've been waiting to use this. Oh, that's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. It's dark, though, I have to say. Yeah, it's pretty dark. It's I like this so much because it's the clump. And so I'm thinking I'll detract from it if I put it on a lighter piece. So I don't think I have anything that dark going this time. Oh, here's another one of those animal stamps. This is a copy, though. came out of something. Okay, let's see. Um, it takes me forever to go through all my stamps. So that's probably not going to work here very well. Here it is in purple. I'm going to leave this out because I think it might work with one of those other colors. I have copies of stamps I love, and then I'm able to buy them as well. Like the same stamp I'll have. This is a real postcard. Oh, for one of the grays. Oh, this will be good. It's got six pence. It has a queen on it. So I'll save that out. Um, let's see. I think this is my bag of copies. There's another of the airplanes. Isn't that beautiful? This is from um, Marguerite. Marguerite Miller. I used to be in a group when I first started on Facebook. Got a lot out of that experience. Learned a lot, made some really nice friends. Oh, look at these pretty stamps. These are more like 
these two sale stamps. But they're pretty and they kind of pep up this envelope. So they might work on this side depending on how I go with that. So I'm going to keep that there. Alright, let's find another bag. These are my real stamps. So again, we're looking for the beige. Aqua. Objects. Insects. French. Or blues. So about these greens? Since it is green. There's something kind of mossy. It's a more blue green, which I love. So, yeah, I don't think any of these are really going to go. It's a black eye. I like that. I think black stamps are unusual. Kind of neat. Okay, what if I did that man from Belgium? And this cowboy. What if I did these two together? I like that. I like that a lot. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, let me put these back. Oh, this will be good too. Okay, so. I'm going to cut out this. Oh, I don't want to cut it. Oh, those two stamps are right next to each other. So each one's going to be a little bit messed up. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Oh my gosh, I can't believe what I just thought. I just thought. I haven't asked how you guys are. <laughs> That's what the other ladies do, and I think, oh, please, at this point, nobody can even answer you, and here I am doing it. It's like when you stop talking, you have a chance to actually realize that you do want to know how everybody's doing. And I do hope the answer is good. It's tough to be good these days with all that's going on in the world. So take it as you can, right? Crafting is my is my stress reducer to be sure. Okay. So you've got that and you've got that. Gosh, I, I really wish I didn't have to have that white chewing. Alright, so I think this calls for I've got to glue this down a little bit here. It's popping up. Well, you know what? I love it so much. Maybe I'll just cut it off. Should I just cut it off? No, I won't. Keep it all the same. Okay. All right. So let's see what we can do. I'm taking this distress from an archival ink coffee pad that's very used up. So this isn't my fresh one. If it was my fresh one, a lot more would come out. And I don't want a bunch to come out. I just want some to come out. So. And I use, and I'm using a really tragic <laughs> sponge top. Can you see how beat up it is? I actually don't mind. I mean, I also have good tops on other daubers in that way. Depending on the look I'm going for. I get a different outcome. So they all have a place in my junk journal life. All right, so I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to put this one here. Maybe a little angled so it's not too. And then, um, and then I do have some single ones, but I prefer to do this. Now here's the thing. I do not have an address stamp. I do not have an address stamp. And I thought I could use my font stamps to 
you know, just ink a portion of them and do that. But I don't think so. So um, you probably all have address stamps and or postcard stamps or something like that. Use those. Or you could hand write on here or fountain pen write. Another thought I had is, but it requires a stamp to do it. So funny. I thought, oh, good. That's what I'll do. I was going to put the address on a napkin and, um, and then rip off the napkin around the edges and then it goes on translucent. But you have to have the stamp in the first place. So I'm not going to be able to put an address on these right now until I, until I get something. But that's, that's the point. you got to come up with something. So, all right, let's glue these down. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to call it a day. Okay. I'm going to put this right here. And I'm going to put my Belgium guy right here. Can you believe I'm gluing a stamp? I mean, you could literally wet it and put it down. going to take black ink and I'm going to do this. Alright, I'm going to try this before I do it though because yeah, that's looking good. Okay. Where do I want this? Where do I want it? I don't want to cover up books. Well, since I don't have an address on here, I'm going to put it here. Well, you know, for me, I go between what's realistic and just decorating. And I, I tend to go towards the realistic. Oh, love, love, love. Now, as I go through my stuff, I might find something else I want to put down here. It's entirely possible. In the meantime, I really like that a lot. And I think that would be pretty. And then, again, I think some sort of a font needs to go there. Okay. And then this side, I'll move on to another. Well, i got to stop. But I think this, you know, could be, let's cut it out. I'm pretty sure you guys don't really need me to show you how I do this over and over again because I think I explained well in my sample at the beginning. So I hope you're not feeling high and dry here since it's called a craft with me. It's not exactly a tutorial. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. And I will certainly post. Mm, Got to decide if I want to keep this in or... So usually, when I don't know, I cut the biggest first, and then whittle my way down. So let's start with this. I wish this came out a different color. I just don't like this color. I love yellow, but I just think this just looks, I don't know, it just doesn't appeal to me. I blamed it on my printer. here you probably can't see it but it's bugging me okay 
so then do we like that on there I don't think so I don't think so it's gonna have to go somewhere else okay all right so I think we're good We've got one two document this one this one I mean you can see and you know use the stamps you have and like remember I had um, well you can use checks checks you have they're pretty the idea on the envelopes from Stephanie is that they were very dark with engraved pictures so lots and lots and lots of engraving was down the side of the envelope and around and they were all different shapes and all different things so cut out what you want I think multiple things can be piled up I think a sweet pretty thing like this can be its own top and a pretty stamp in the corner and then, um, you know, maybe you want to put something here in this in this corner. I think I would do that. I think I would put something here, sort of roundish, and then the address would go over here. So they're fun. I think they're really fun. I'm so glad that she posted that. And again, if you have any questions, ask them below. I'm more than happy to answer. And I will be posting what I make. So. Please follow me on Instagram so you can see them. My name on Instagram is the same as my YouTube channel, Journal Breeze. So I'm easy to find that way. And I think that's it. So thank you if you've a great